We're going to look at watermarking images using a Photoshop action in this video. So I'm going to show you how that you can watermark your images, both portrait and landscape, using one single action that will resize your watermark to the same place and same scale in both orientations. I've got a couple of files open here in my Photoshop. I've got a portrait mode image and a landscape image, and then I've got a watermark. I want this watermark to translate over to both of these images at the same scale and in the same location and I want it to be an action that from now on I just click it once and it does it as many times as I want. So here we go. First of all what I need to point out is that this watermark document is larger than the pictures I'm going to be watermarking. I'll show you my image size here. It's about 20 by 20 inches and the images that I'm going to watermark are only about 11 by 17 each. In order for this tutorial to work properly, your watermark must be bigger and I'll show you why in just a minute. So let's go ahead and just jump into recording an action. If you're not familiar with actions, you can go to Window and find actions right here. I have mine over here in my toolbar and I use it all the time. So once you open up this dialog, we're going to go down here and create a new action. Click on that, name it. I'm going to name this watermark, if I can spell watermark1, and set record. Now once you hit this button, you'll notice right here you've got the recording button activated. That means everything I do from now on is going to be recorded. So if you screw this up, you're going to have to go back and record it again. So make sure that you follow what I'm about to show you exactly or else your mistakes will be recorded and they'll rerun with every watermark. Now I'm on the image I want to watermark. I'm going to go over here to File and Place and I'm going to grab the Photoshop document that has my watermark in it. Remember it's larger than my image and it's a PSD file which means that if I had transparencies in it places in the image I could see through they're going to be retained when it places it. Now Photoshop has placed my image centered in my document and scaled down to fit within the bounds of the image in which it's placed. This is very important. Photoshop won't scale it up properly every time but it will scale it down to fit your image so as long as your watermark is bigger it should size down correctly. Now once it places it I'll get this transform dialog going on here and I'll just hit enter and that'll commit that change and there's my watermark. Now my watermark sitting in the middle of my image and it's really big. I don't want it that big but before I size it down I want to go over here to my layer right click on it and rasterize the layer. I'm not going to go into detail about why that's important but basically what I just did was lock the size of this layer so that it's exactly the size now and it fits in this image and it, and it doesn't go any bigger. This is important as well when we're scaling it down. Now I want to change the size of it because it's way too big so I'm going to go to edit free transform or you can hit control T either way and when I go to grab it and size it down you may notice that it can get a little uh, bent out of proportion. To avoid that hold down on shift and that'll keep it perfectly proportioned and then I need it centered on my image. To do that I'm gonna hold Alt. Alt is gonna keep it centered right where it was placed. So with Alt and Shift held down I'm gonna transform it down to whatever size I want it. In this case I'm gonna put it right about this big. Once I get it there I hit enter again and now that committed the transform that's the size of my image. I do want to put it in my bottom left. You'd be tempted to drag it there but if you do it's going to record that drag and then when you do it on a portrait oriented image uh, it's going to set your watermark in the wrong place. So rather than drag it here's what we want to do. Go to select all. You can also hit control A and you'll see your entire document selected. Now you can go into layer and align layers to selection. I'm going to align to bottom edge and then I'm going to go back there same place again align layers to selection and align to left edge. Now I'm going to deselect or control D either one 
and it's perfectly in my bottom left. Now maybe you don't want it right up against the edge of the image and I actually don't. So what I'm going to do now is bump it using the arrow keys on my keyboard. So I'm going to bump it five times up and five times right and that gives it a little bit of a margin. I didn't drag it. I used the arrow keys to bump it a specified step and this is important. I'm going to stop my action and now here comes the true test. Will it work the same on my portrait? I'll go to the top of my action and play all the things I just did on my portrait sized image and see what it does. There we go. It set it in and the action played correctly, setting my watermark in to the same place and same um, size as on the previous image. And it'll do this to any, any image I want. And now I can batch it if I want using Photoshop's um, batching processes and I can do it to tons of images at one time. Now that's great you say if your image is square what, a, what if your image is not square? Well I'll show you a trick to kind of get around that. It's always best to use square and the reason for that is because it will always find the edges of the closest sides of your image so depending on what orientation your image is at it will scale it down and you always want it scaling um, to the closest edge. So we might have a watermark like this which is not square but see what I've done is set it into a square black image. So I have this white watermark in a square black image and I'm going to show you how to create an action that will work for this. We'll delete this watermark off and we're going to do this again. We're going to record another action call it watermark 2. Hit record, go in and place and now I'm going to place the other file and this is the one I just showed you that has a rectangular text block inside of a square black file. Again it's bigger than the image I'm placing it into and there you'll see it come in. We're going to commit the placement just like we did last time. Go over here rasterize our layer just like last time using all the same exact motions we're going to scale it down to the size we want it we're going to hit control A and we're going to align it again just like we we did last time you will notice something different though it's going to align it to the black which means that when you align it to the bottom you'll see that you have that extra space. So I'll hit control D and D select. So now what? I don't want it there and I don't want the black to show. So I'm going to set my layer to screen and then I'm just going to bump it using my arrow keys on my keyboard again. And I can bump it to wherever I'd like. That's good. Hit stop. Now let's give that a try. Let's go over here to our portrait I'm going to play the same selection and boom there you go that's a rectangular image aligned now obviously it's a one color white image and I'm using screen to kind of cheat there so you don't see the black if your watermark were black you would use multiply and use a white background but you can do it either way and this is an action that you can reuse over and over again so hopefully that helps you out with how to set a watermark into your image in the same place at the same scale every time and I hope this will save you a lot of time in the future so thanks have fun and enjoy